name is Elke Ventur. My mom's from Indiana. My dad's from Russia. And my brother is from Haiti. I'm L. Kevin Tour. Most of my friends call me L. Most of my family calls me Kevin. I have a full little brother. We share both the same parents. His name is L. Kyle Tour. Uh, we live in a healthy environment. I really wanted for anything. I felt like I was a pretty good comrade to my brother Kevin. My older brother's name is Rick. He's a half brother, and he's old enough to be my father. I moved back to my dad's house after he'd come back to Louisville and to spend a year with him in my senior year of high school to kind of reconnect from your first year of life. We lived together. My dad was from Russia. He came over when he was about 10. No, he was a good guy. I didn't know to think any otherwise. Sometimes I might fall guilty of exaggerating memories or something. I certainly fear that that could be uh, something I've done or an easy thing to do. Because he's, he's dead, as of uh, 2005, he died. My mom's from Indiana, from Evansville, Indiana. She's sweet. She's a smart lady. She's uh, got this maybe sense of selective choosing to not hear things. But at the end of the day, yeah, she's still my mom. She's uh, certainly the sweetest lady I know. Kevin! <laughs> I am so glad you're here. <laughs> Our life was just as normal as could be. It wasn't uh, too trying growing up. Pretty easy and, and spoiled, I guess. Jeez. My family had this one particular wall, I remember, a staircase at the house we lived in. But on the right side, going up the stairs, there were a bunch of pictures, uh, framed pictures going all the way up, family portraits, uh, event pictures, a lot of pictures. And one in particular was a larger portrait, maybe eight by 10. It was a picture of me as a baby, and uh, the other person was this little black boy, about 11 years old, and certainly didn't look a lot alike me, but it was an intimate sort of picture. It was a family-style portrait. It was a familiar sort of photo, everything except the other boy in the picture. And they would say, you know, who's that? Me and my mom and my dad would say, oh, it's Roni, it's your brother. He lived here a long time ago, and he went back to Haiti. Your dad was working for Naval Ordnance. He was on a trip to Florida, and he wanted to go on a weekend overseas. Your dad said, where should I go? What would be a neat place to go? And I said, go to Haiti, because I got the neatest wood bows, because I had been to Haiti on a cruise. We went there and they all came up to the ship and brought things up to you to sell. It's just a neat country. Your dad went there, but instead of wooden bows, he brought back a child. Rooney. Rooney. So he was 10 when he came. His dad was killed a long time ago. I'm not sure when. But his mom was still alive. Your dad wanted him over here because he was 10 when he came over in Russia and wanted to get Roni the same opportunity. Uh, what I was told, he had met a family down there, Roni and his mom. It seemed to be a lot of the business, the family personal business was about that. Through a lot of attempts, a lot of, lots of money, we finally got him here. I actually got to meet Roni probably within the first day or so that he was back, or, or that he came to the U.S., came back with Dad. Right. You were two years out, and Roni was 10. He went to Grandma and Grandpa, and they loved him. And... Roni obviously didn't speak a lick of English. It was very uh, interesting. Played together a lot, had a lot of good times together. 
We had a birthday party for him. Well, there's a pool. There's a pool. <laughs> there was a pool and there was great food and snacks and cakes and ice creams and all that good stuff. And I felt so sorry for Brony when he came over. His arms weren't any bigger than mine. He ate me out of house and home. He just ate everything. Everything. I said, Brony, I was afraid he was going to get sick because he just kept shoving it in. At a lot of parties, birthday parties, he was always there. Over the course of years, I started asking more, why did Roy go back, or how did he get here, these sorts of things. Or I guess particularly when I'd ask why he went back, they would say, oh, he's acting up, or he was getting into trouble, or he's getting a bit too rough with you. It was really, really difficult for Ronnie to adjust to the culture here, though. Ronnie was a little bit of a handful in a lot of ways. It was tough for him getting along with other kids. I think I remember some skirmishes, some fights, maybe some disciplinary stuff around the house. Every day a school would call me, Ronnie couldn't behave, and I'd say, Ronnie, you have to behave, honey. You must behave. He didn't know how to behave because the culture was so different. You know, we had wonderful birthday parties and everything, and he didn't know how to play with you. He just couldn't, couldn't make it here at that age. My room to question something as big as sending a boy back to Haiti wasn't really, I wasn't really in a position to, to ask too many questions, I guess, or didn't think I was. Yeah, they're your parents and you're a child, so. I don't blame Ronnie at all for any of this. He just couldn't adapt. He just didn't know. It was just a story at a certain point, and it was a, a collection of snippets and, um, different ways they had told me the same few facts. You know, Dad was in Haiti in the 80s a couple of times, or one time, or whatever the case was. And one of those trips, he brought back Roni, as we called him. It was, my, it was part of my story, but it seemed fictional, almost, because I had no recollection of it. Imagining yourself in a storybook, a picture book. You're one of the characters, and this is your experience and your story, but you're not familiar with it, and uh, the faces aren't familiar, and it was distant, it was fictional. You might call him a brother, but it came with this preface of, I don't know him. Jusqu'à l'âge de 10 11 ans, je ne suis pas de 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 mon papa et whatever. So, je suis censé lever, je ne suis pas de mon histoire et mon papa. Pour aller à un bagage extraordinaire qui va arriver dans la vie. Je ne la pas de Un jour matin, je suis à l'école. Un jour matin, je me levé pendant que je suis sur pied comme ça. Pendant que je suis sur comme ça, je me suis dit que maman est sous tête pour me laisser me lever. Oui, oui. Je me suis levé et je me suis dit que je ne suis pas de papa, je ne suis pas de papa. 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 Je de papa, ça a gagné si mon papa, mon bien papa, pas moi, je ne sais pas qui est le jeune homme. Papa, monsieur, il est là, il est tout. Il juste let go, il est le papa. Bon. Pendant trois jours, il a réglé tout le papier, tout le bagage, il a fait le système de perdu, il a fait le passeport. Il fait un bon petit temps aux États-Unis. Ça qui était surtout marqué, moi, l'aime dérivé dans la caille là, je viens un petit bébé. 
كيتي لي كيفن Aux États-Unis, moi j'ai un petit bébé à Nakaïla. Moi je suis très 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 proche avec elle. Surtout nous deux petits mouns qui étaient dans Nakaïla. Moi j'ai 10 ans, lui j'ai 1 an. Nous sommes très 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 proches. Je suis proche de la Kevin. Le soir, je suis allé penser que je suis allé dans la chambre de Kevin. Je suis allé veiller, je suis allé tuer avec elle. Je suis venu très proche avec le bébé. En Haïti, c'est comme un enfant est tout le monde. Menelik est mon fils. Si il fait quelque chose de mal, personne ne peut le faire. Il est un enfant. It's just like that in Haiti. It's like there are not too many boundaries. He's the village kid. Everyone is his parent. I had to fight all the time when I was in the States. Because I got in, in the States only uh, uh, after a few weeks, they sent me to school. First, I didn't speak English, so I always got the blame. They always put the blame on me because I couldn't exp express myself. After the Jean-Claude Duvalier departure, and it's like the media was like feeding some really bad image uh, about Haiti. And most of the time at school, like they, they, they were like making fun of me. And I had, I had to fight for my respect. I can't call that misbehave. I, had, I, I was a minority, so I had to fight. And most of the time I had to fight to get respect. So, bon, je ne sais pas pour une raison ou pour l'autre. Et Larry, qui m'a toujours dit c'est papa, m'a décidé pour, pour voyer ma Haïti. Je suis rentré à Haïti le 2 décembre 1986. Je l'ai emmené à l'aéroport avec Larry. Il a pleuré mon cœur. Je ne me souviens jamais de ce jour. Il était à l'aéroport et nous avons tous les deux. C'était sad. I didn't want him to go, he didn't want to go, but... Dad was a, a very impulsive person. Yeah. He really was. I, even at that time, I remember thinking, you know, that's, that's pretty damn crappy. He was taken out of that environment and only giving him one year to adjust into it and saying, yeah, I think it's time to go back. Yeah, uh, shouldn't have happened. I missed Roni a lot after that. His mom was still alive, and I think now I wonder, you know, how could he have been different? In 2005, Dad died of cancer, and when that happened, it shook me. It was it was rough. I lost a sense of uh, direction. It was like set adrift. His dad was uh, an anchor, a rock um, in my life. He was he was important. When my mom passed away, like the only refuge I had was music. Then and I've been a musician ever since. Parce que après après la maman maman 94, m'obligé c'est c'est quoi anglais mal fait pour me défendre du moins. J'étais j'étais professeur dans le laboratoire de langue moderne d'Haïti, m'étais contre faire cours dans l'American English School. Continue à vivre, une petite temps de faire aux États-Unis, ma vie m'en pile. Si tant ça me fait aux États-Unis qui va vivre mon direction parce que c'est là que je à parler anglais, c'est là que je découvre un paquet de styles de musique, tout. Pour ouais, et rock and roll, et country music, tout ça. Mais pas de toi qu'on est en Haïti. I started to make uh, like my living from music too. I made a huge hit with a group called Chris.
la vie a continué, la vie a continué, la vie a continué. Il y a 12 janvier, il y a un tremblement de terre 12 janvier 2010 ça, qui était saccagé. Je suis perdu pour mes petites mains. Je suis perdu pour mes petites mains. Je suis perdu pour mes petites mains. Je suis perdu tout ça. Je suis perdu pour mes petites mains. 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 Okay. Font huit mois au okay, cas bon, ça va te marcher. Pas contre, pas trois fois dans planter, pas pas contre qui j'en bah il fonctionne vraiment. Vin tourner, vin vivre pour tout prince. On l'a et pas trop actif sur les réseaux sociaux. Mais d'ailleurs, on a parlé de Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. When I'm not traveling for work, I work from home. My browser on my computer, I had a Facebook open just sitting in the background. Quand ça me dit damn, d'ailleurs, mais qu'on est ça, petit bébé ça, qui me déconsidère quoi, petit frère, mais qui ça lui devenu. My profile picture at the time was my picture as a baby with him as a 10, 11 year old boy. Here's a little white toe-headed me and this slightly larger black boy sitting in front of a Sears backdrop. It's kind of goofy. Uh, at the time, it's how I looked at it, rather. When I tapped L. Kevin Tu, then I am a grand tout de monde qui sa moi moi en photo qui monte et qui gagne moi-même qui Kimber Kevin dans mes mains. When Roy found me, he saw himself in my profile picture. At first sight, le petit fait que ouais, photo à mon côté connaît peut-être moi. Si le map garde bien, me dit dem, quand mon ça, ça t'a supposé moi-même. Le me voit demande ami, bah Kevin, non, bah même si c'était Kevin, pas moi. When I clicked over, back over to it, I saw I had a friend request. I looked at it, and it was one of those moments where you kind of think. Is this somebody I met drunkenly at a bar that I just don't remember? Uh, I just didn't, I didn't know who this person was. I didn't recognize the name at first, aside from the, the middle name, Roni, which I knew from the stories that had been told to me by my parents. And it took me a few minutes to piece it together that, shit, maybe this is that Roni. Right away, to suite, I said, I Shortly thereafter, I got a message from Roy saying, hey, bro, is this a Kevin tour that, you know, Louisville, Kentucky, something like that. 27 years or so later, I got a friend request from my brother Roy. It wasn't long after that before they set up the first Skype meetup. My roommate at the time, Brandon, was there to watch all this unfold. I was in the next room. Sometimes when he was having the conversation, would come in and I was able to meet his kids. She loves the camera. <laughs> it was weird to sort of see it from the outside and then kind of step off of the webcam and just be like, good luck. <laughs> I didn't know this person, and I guess he could have been suspicious of me too. Between 10 years old and late 30s, whatever he was, you don't know the person each other's become. I, I could have been a real asshole. Not to say I'm not. <laughs> we were effectively just pen pals who would occasionally Skype or talk on the phone, but often just chat online. I sort of said, well, what's next, man? It's cool that you reconnected, you know? Does he want anything? Like, do you want anything out of the, like, do you guys want to have a relationship? I wanted to know this person better, this pen pal, this brother. I had learned via our chats that he'd become a musician of some merit. That was really cool, I thought. I would look at his videos on YouTube and dig more into his, his songs and his history as an artist and as an adult.
So for 11 months, we've been Skyping and chatting online. Last time we see her, we have a baby. Smile there. And I decided I needed to go to Haiti. I think the weirdest thing to him about it was, what do I do now? The absurdity is about to begin, but I just don't know where it's going to lead. Knowing his propensity for wacky adventures, like I knew that there was a good chance that he was going to make the trip. A little less than a year, I went down for my first trip in 2011 to visit with Roy for the first time. I doubted for a little when Al told me that he bought his ticket and he gave me his itinerary. I was wow. I just couldn't believe it. Man, I was really, really nervous. I didn't know this person I was going to see, whose house I was going to stay in. Do you speak the language? Is it safe? Do you have anyone that can help you out down there? Are you bringing anyone with you? It was a bit unnerving, I guess, because you're putting a real person to this almost fictional story. It's just a story, so now you're trying to bring life to this character. You know, Elle's the kind of guy that wants a story and doesn't care what it takes to get it. I wasn't sure why you were going down there for the first time. I really love Cabaret. It's, uh, I really love Cabaret. The people there are very nice. And I like countrysides too. I like the sea. I like to listen to the sound of the sea when I, yeah, when, when I wake up in the morning, stuff like that. The international media give a bad press about Haiti. And I thought like it, it would be the, the category of people that would listen to the, to the press and would be afraid not coming to Haiti. Everything that they are saying of, about Haiti, it's not true. At night, I don't close my doors. There's no racism in Haiti. You can tell. It's a free country. They say America is free, but in some places in America, it's not real because you have racism, you have, but it's totally different in Haiti. Whatever color you are, whatever race you are, you can walk freely in the street and nobody will bother you. They just see you as a human being, as a, anybody. I was happy that Kevin could see it with his own eyes. At the time, I, I wasn't thinking too much, I guess, about finding my brother again, but more kind of getting to the bottom of this and finding uh, out more about my personal history and giving this character a heartbeat and making it more three-dimensional. I quickly found a brother in that character. I was with a lot of emotions because I imagine you 27 years after, 27 years after, you're separated from the world. You don't have to know the world. And you can see that you have magic, that you have magic to fight and you can see that you have magic. It was amazing for me because, you know, after 27 years, I didn't expect to see you again. I didn't even expect to hear about you. And it just happened like this, like magic. And it, yeah, it was a great thing for me. Probably uh, people told Elle not to come. And he just, beside of everything that people said to him, he was willing to come to see me. And that was very strong. And that's very meaningful for me in my life. He would tell me story, mom and dad. And you know, he certainly had memories. And it did affect him big. When I was in Kentucky, I was so close to Mom Linda in the living room watching TV together. We were pretty close. Through this, in the air, it comes back to you. You understand? So, Jumale, it's the unlucky day. So, what you reap is what you saw. 
du mal nèg pas de klaxon pour avec tous les lavini pour j'ai ta ouais du mal nèg pas de klaxon c'est son fort pour ouais c'est son fort pour ouais so the, the the small fish came from a, a, a small water where everything is cool you understand but the 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 small fish has a big dream to to go to big cities and you understand and the, the small fish keep keep going and while the small fish is going to uh, to uh to conquer big cities and he sees a, a big whale fish coming back and asking him where where i can find a little water there's no water there's no fisher there's no fisher fisherman fisherman sure a, a, a place a cool place that we, a peaceful we chill, yeah, yeah. a peaceful and now the little fish is realizing damn i was in paradise and I'm leaving paradise to go to hell. And I'm so small, you understand? Sure. And that big whale is looking for a little place <laughs> and I'm going for a big place. Right. And that was the story of the, of the song. It was right around those first couple trips where I had developed a love for photography and for cameras. And coincidentally, I had become friends with Dave, who happens to be a videographer. I think we might have had a conversation about just more than likely I'll go back this year. So if you'd like to join, well, fuck it, do you want to come to Haiti? <laughs> Roy came through. He certainly took it on with a sense of gusto. He wanted to show us some cool stuff. And he wanted Dave to film some cool stuff. And, and man, he, did, he, he came through. Roy outlined a pretty rigorous schedule of musicians and artists we were going to meet and, and hang out with and, and, and see perform and create. Catholique, grand même lui-même, mais c'est un vieux deux ans. Moi, lui veut me joindre la Kaili, ça me veut me joindre la Kaili. Grand même c'est un gros temps. Et mon grand temps, vous savez qu'on est sur ce côté, mon grand même c'est vraiment lié, c'est innocence, mais lié, c'est évibration, c'est tout bas. Moi, un gros temps pour toi, quoi. En gros, moi c'est Ziki, c'est cet éloi du Ken, c'est petit de mon frère. En gros, moi je me fais percussion. Slaves, they were watching like how the how they play music the and, and how they play violin, the accordion, guitar, stuff like that, and they translate that mu that music into drums. Wait, wait, yeah. put his finger across it. We have to be to identify and to Haitian. We have to movement that is movement samba. Samba is a poet. Samba is a poet. It seems to be a character paysan qui est folie tout habitant qui habite dans le monde. Même j'allais me dire, je dis à sa femme, je dis non, je dis à sa Samba, Samba Lutin, Samba Zing, Samba Simbi. Ce n'est pas l'autre, ce n'est pas Dieu de l'axe. C'est Simbi. Yeah. Oh, pour qui c'est nous-mêmes, chaque jour, toujours qu'un problème. Pour qui c'est nous-mêmes, chaque jour, toujours qu'un problème. Problème division, cap crasine depuis longtemps. 
Oh, pour qui c'est nous-mêmes, chaque jour, toujours gain problème. Problème division, Kafkazen depuis longtemps. N'a les grenadiers à l'assaut. N'a les grenadiers à l'assaut. Compte nous, compte même nous-mêmes. Pas maïsien, c'est pas marin. Quand on a tiré retourné, pour y'a pas de chemin. Yon ti jes pou yo, yon tendres pou yo, yon fave pou yo, yon lone pou yo. Parce que nous dis ça, chaque monde qui n'a musique, yon force na yon même, yon force qui relie avec la nati. Musique pa gen barrière, musique pa gen frontière, n'a pensé. Bout la tracé, n'a pensé. It was stuff that I think people don't normally have access to. Pretty broad number of artists across genres of Haitian music. People in places that normally aren't filmed. Rap fait nous rebelles. Rap fait nous cruels. Rap fait nous connaître son révolutionnaire. Nous c'est Lyon, Madame New York. No contest, no conquest, no fake ass. Par un quel white man, ni sister Batika Kavina Fatou. Pas de pas. Haiti can be a wild place, but at the same time, it's a place of peace and tranquility. We found artists in the same genre with completely different viewpoints. Every time we have an exchange, we have to go to the university, we have to go with the country. Foncez la neglaria. Foncez la tout le monde euh, en quelque sorte pour nous. Pour nous, on sait parce que nous tous, c'est une. Tout le monde, territoire, tout le tout globe, là, nous tous, c'est une. Pour les promis, c'est qu'on doit plus parler. Nous plus foncez, nous plus foncez, mais nous sommes la femme. Et là, je vais vous dire, c'est toujours difficile pour nous de parler de tête. Oui. Mais je suis capable de dire que je suis un musicien, un artiste, guitariste, compositeur, et puis chanteur, et puis peintre. Moi, c'est peintre tout. Depuis le temps, vous frappez. Depuis le temps, vous frappez, je ne suis pas capable. Depuis le temps, vous frappez. Depuis le temps, vous frappez, je ne suis pas capable. La culture haïtienne est tellement riche que si nous ne pouvons pas une génération qui va faire le bruit à niveau mondial. Comment se fait-il que nous pouvons capables de faire, faire la une de l'international là Parce que c'est notre plus riche. Moi-même, je voyage en pile, mal plusieurs côté, mon cher. Je pense que Haïti a une richesse extraordinaire culturellement. Il y a une importance fondamentale. Rue ça, c'est rite qui commence à perdre. Par conséquent, nous-mêmes, nous avons nos vélo. Estimer que Tambouan, c'est lui qui nomme culture. Un ange ou découvrir qui dit que le peuple là, c'est à travers la musique. With each musician we met, I was learning more about Haiti and Haiti's culture, but I was also learning more about my brother. After I came back uh, from the States, I had another name. They, they used to call me Shaba. Oh, Shaba. Shaba is a Jamaican artist. I used to listen to Shaba all the time when my mom passed away. Even though I couldn't understand all the words, I couldn't understand like the ideas of the songs. Les cafés sans sortir dans roche, les femmes d'amour, ils trouvent où ça même dans sa poche. Les femmes d'amour, ils trouvent les fonds pour droite pour gauche. Les femmes d'amour. Je n'ai jamais intéressé à tourner aux États-Unis jusqu'à ce que je me devienne. En 2004, nous devons faire un carnaval. Je suis un candidat d'un événement. Donc, on travaille aux États-Unis, on a décidé de aller des visas. 
I had seen a lot of artists and a lot of passionate people creating stuff. A lot of this stuff I really liked. I called my friend Mo, who owns an art gallery in Louisville, Kentucky, and proposed the idea of doing a Haitian art night. Anything we sold, the proceeds would go back to the artists. We called it Sac Passe. There's these, you know, wonderful Haitian artists that are creating throughout this suppression. It's really inspiring, and I think Elle saw that in these artists, and that's why he brought some of their artwork back to us. I wanted to help these artists find a bigger audience. Yeah, so back here we've got a lot of, I guess, Roy's painting, uh, one by Jean Bernard up there. It's uh, dark and colorful all at once. It's very Haiti. If you want an ambassador for Haiti, Jean Bernard is the most capable. If you want to represent Haiti with music, good music, there's no better than Jean Bernard Thomas. Roy shared something special with us. Over 25 Haitian musicians, artists, and everybody in between and introduced us to so many people and places we would never see on our own. Everybody we met had a lot of love and respect for Roy. We made new friends, new connections, and I shot hundreds of photos. And as I've come to learn, a photo can be a powerful thing. We talked through Facebook, we emailed, we even talked on the phone. Ah, uh, there you go. I see you. Can you see me now? Yeah, I can see And when you we now. could, we uh, video chatted through Skype or Facebook chat. But because Roy didn't have a steady internet connection or a constant source of power to charge his devices... I'm looking for Roy. Is Roy there? Our communication became difficult. I'm trying to call Roy, but there's a hurricane afoot in Haiti, so... And now more than ever, I wanted to share something special, something that defines me and my friends with Roy. I left America, it was in 1986, and I really miss those people, you understand, because they, they, they played a role in my life. I mean, I used to hang with them, and I, I love them. That would be a great thing for me to see them again. We had decided to help Roy get his visa to visit the United States. to help Roy and Jean Bernard come to the U.S. to record in a studio with the best equipment, with the best collaborators in Louisville, Kentucky. This was a chance for Roy to fulfill a dream. We're here at La La Land Studios, uh, ran by the amazing Kevin Ratterman. I think this was a really cool opportunity to do things in a different way. You know, I feel like having two different cultures and styles, everything that they're doing down there is completely organic. And like we were up here, like not trying to like recreate their style of music. We were literally just like Scott was just like doing what he would do. Just trying to um, just get myself in a headspace to create music, and just listening for the you know the rhythmic content of the song, and then what was going on arrangement-wise. You know, it's very polyrhythmic. There's a lot of organic acoustic instruments. I think what you 
guys are ultimately going for is like a fusion of you know their world and the world that you're familiar with in Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> It's really cool to see people who are doing it for all the right reasons, and they're just doing it because they can't. There's not an option to do anything else. That's what makes it have a lot of integrity and also be emotional. And all the music that I heard that you guys played from us down there was heavily emotional. I guess we were supposed to find out something from uh, Roy and John Bernard this morning. We scheduled their visa appointment today at 7.30 this morning. But when they got there, they were asked you know, the same set of standard questions that every basic tourist and business visa is met with. And they brought all their paperwork with them, as we thought. Uh, their petition approval, their airfare, their airline ticket, rather, that we had already purchased. Maybe I'm just holding out one last sense of hope in that the petition request or petition approval from our side has hadn't been received down there. We got the notice on Facebook from Roy around 8.30, I guess, this morning, saying that they were refused or denied their visa again. And uh, from that point, I've been kind of a wreck. Um, uh, I guess disheartening is the best word for it. Uh, at this point, emotionally, I'm we're just kind of flat. Hey, bro, it's Kevin. Uh, we've, I think we've done everything we can do here, but for the time being and the, the near future, it doesn't look like we'll be able to get you and John Bernard here, but it's not looking good for the next couple weeks, if not this year, but uh, call me when you can. We'll talk to you soon. Either way, we'll see you soon. It just sucks when you gear yourself up so hard for something that you think is going to happen and you pay so much money and you follow the steps, you do what they tell you to do, and there's nothing. Our goal was to import art and culture, but there you go, I'm done. Levez Cecilia, levez Cecilia, levez Cecilia. It felt so good just to know your mama. It kind of brings us into their world a little bit because it's so easy to get shit done in America. Logistics are, are like a breeze and it's not there. They're forced to improvise all the time. And so this kind of brings us into their world a little bit, where it's just like, all right, we plan to do this thing. It's not going to work out. All right, we got all the energy. Let's not spin our wheels. Let's do something. Yeah, open up with a conversation on color. Of race and sex and religions are vicious of one another. Sisters and brothers trapped in the system to make us suffer. Systematically, systems fail us one way or another. But I'd rather view the world from a spaceship and not a basement. Basis to keep the human race racing the destination. Mother nature could use a face love use communication. No coincidence, you get cooler when you remove the blankets. Uh bring Roy and Jean Bernard to the US, we decided to bring these musicians from Kentucky to perform and record with musicians in Haiti. We were able to schedule some time at the Audio Institute in Jacmel, a few hours away from Port-au-Prince. It's 
an amazing place. My name is Zach Niles. I am the director of the Audio Institute in Jack Malhady. I'm also manager of La Cumizique. Kevin asked if I would help him set up another recording session. This entire project resonates with me as a as an artist, as a manager, as an, a great appreciator of music because connecting people through music allows people to see each other for who they are. So music is, to me, the best way to create empathy. So music is life. Music is the only thing that transcends. Music is the question and the answer. Music is my heart, my brain, and everything that functions with the body. Music is rhythm. Music is wisdom. Music is connection. Like I was saying, God is the greatest musician. Without music, life would have no sense. Music really brings people together. There's no doubt about it. I went to uh, watch Laco Music uh, concert last night. It's like everybody, white, black, everybody, they were dancing on the same rhythm. It's like everybody transcended the moment. It's like everybody wear one color. Let me take you to Jack May right now. At the time, I'd been with my girlfriend for about two years, but she'd never met Roy. Lauren and Roy had talked online, but this would be the first time they'd meet in person. He actually took us to where Roy lived growing up, and he points to this tree, which was dead now. He points to it and is like, that's the tree I was climbing when my mom called me over to tell me that I was going to go to the US. I was going to go home with Larry. Certainly left like an impression on me, and was also a really cool moment to like experience with L and with Roy, and, and to see that. Pas seulement là pour me chanter parce que mon belle voix, mais me chanter parce que j'ai des bagages fondamentales que j'ai pour me dire. Dans la musique, moi, toujours bon message positif qui a passé. Toujours positivité, et que ce soit pour l'environnement, que ce soit pour tout le monde, que ce soit pour le respect de tout le monde, et des messages d'unité. Donc, toujours bon bagage comme ça. Derrière la musique, moi. Les personnes n'importe qui j'en rêvais, ils vont dans l'école. Obviously, there was music every day. You know, we were with a new musician or a new recording artist. Play the tambour. 
Tout le monde qui joue dans le monde, on dit au percussionniste, on dit au tambouriné, mais dans la coupe, on dit au tambouriné. On flaque son bagage antique. Rien là pour ça, qui est une grosse histoire de, qui approchait en fait de nous-mêmes parce que c'est une force toute haïtienne. Son mouvement de collaboration, vous doit, c'est vous, nous, tout haïtien, c'est nous, nous. son business spirituel lié. La musique, c'est un unique moyen de connexion différents peuples qui pourra gérer la dimension universalité parce que nous sommes une seule famille, c'est la race humaine. Our friend 35 asked us to collaborate on a music video and he'd found the perfect location. Pas quitter un lien fini, vous tout connaissez, nous devons connaître, nous c'est vous tout. Smoke my words, black in the lungs of those who try to speak my words with deceitful tongues. See, cuz speaking the truth doesn't come without its persecutions. We went from barbaric executions to non evidence based prosecutions. So, speaking the truth seems to be my only solution. See, you can take my words as you will. I'm just a young revolutionist expressing how I feel, but no, my words are real from the tip of the barrel to the back of the steel. See, I'm so wrapped up in this war shit. Ain't no time for fun, ain't no time for rest. Soldiers, shoulder your guns. Actuellement, là, nous avons Jardin Samba. C'est un côté, côté bon genre, Boudou Samba. C'est la musique que nous jouons, que nous les musiques racines. La musique vaudou a là depuis la création du monde, parce que la musique africaine, alors vaudou original là, son vaudou, qui a fait tout ça, toute dignité, toute fierté, toute histoire sacrée. Tandis que, Vaudou syncrétisant déjà son fusion. C'est quand vous me dites, vous prenez vaudou, vous mélangez la rock. C'est une fusion vaudou rock. Oh, won't you look into your crystal ball? I got a palm that reads like a novel. I'm not afraid to die. Just don't turn the lights off. Why it always been here and gives what it has to bring because it's our corporation. Yeah. Because one man cannot really do the whole thing. You see what I mean? Because we are people, we need people. exciting and energizing to bring everyone together. In the spirit of collaboration, Roy and I talked seriously about the visa to denial and the possibility of trying it again soon. We came here twice and we were refused for the visa. I don't see why they said that we, are, we were not qualified anyway. So you had to come down, do all that for a quick no? They basically ask you the same questions they ask you online if you were not qualified. Why didn't they tell you uh, online. online that you're not qualified and you didn't have to come, like, waste some money and come waste your time, come here and get refusion? If I have to go to another country, I would like that my art could take me there. Roy's visa is denied. It's gonna, I mean, it's gonna fucking suck, but we went through it last year. We're trying it again this year, so I suppose if it doesn't work this year, we'll try it again next year. Yeah, that would be great, but if it doesn't happen, that, that won't kill me. 
Life goes on. Life goes on. Well, let's get the bad stuff out of the way, I guess. If Roy's visa is denied, what I see in the next 5, 10, 20 years is me coming back every year for the next 5, 10, 20 years, I guess. This is my new house. Me and, uh, and Manelik lives here. I wish you to cook for Manelik in the morning. It's a nice, uh, nice house. This have some issues when it's raining. We have a few holes. So when it's raining, like, like the water just pours down. Pours down. It's so good. I hope to build another house in Cabaret pretty soon because I love here, but I, I love uh, Cabaret better. I think it's the dream of every musician to have his, his or her own music space. I never imagined myself doing anything else than music. I want to have a, a studio where any artist, if they want to come by, like I don't have to go to a, to a specific studio to record stuff. I can do everything home. I will make it happen to have my own like, creation space. When I was in the States, music was there for me. When I came back to Haiti, uh, music was still there for me. When, when my mom passed away, music was there for me. When I lost my child in 2010 uh, in the earthquake, music was there for me, and music is still around for me. I, th I could say that uh, music is everything. <laughs> If we get ready in the United States, if Roy gets his visa, that would certainly uh, be something life-changing. It'd be big. It would just be cool to, to share my life with Roy, to share you know, my life, my everyday, as he's done with me in Haiti. Uh, it would be something monumental. So since we got back from our last trip to Haiti, six days ago, we found out that Roy had, uh, had cholera and was in the hospital. He was there all week. He sounded, uh, sounded like death on Tuesday. I mean, a combination of old and vomit and <laughs> just not good. Um, I mean, he sounded rough. And he called him a couple times that day. He called him a couple times the following days. And a few of those phone calls, he had to hang up because he had to vomit uh, covering cholera. That's what it is. And finally, two days ago, he kind of popped out of it. Um, he was able to put food back, and they released him from the hospital yesterday. When he returned, he found out that one of his, as Roy said, one of his so-called friends had taken some of the money that he had stashed away at his house, about 250 bucks. But, uh, you know, best laid plans, I suppose. It's funny, even at his lowest, someone was able or had the nerve to take something off of him. It's kind of infuriating. When something's, you know, you have something good going on, and then, um, you just met with such resistance. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah! <laughs> I'm fine. Fine. Um, fine and happy because uh, Kevin is here. <laughs> so how's mom? She's doing okay? She's good, yeah. She's having everybody over on the 18th for Christmas, so hopefully that means yeah, you too. Yeah. What counts for me is like you're here. That's, yeah, that's what I was telling Dave, regardless, yeah, and Lauren too. I was happy to see Roy healthy and in good spirits because we had a major challenge ahead of us. Yeah, I don't, that's the one thing I don't have on there, I forgot. Oh, you don't have the business card? I forgot Trees in this country. Here's five of them. But here's the contract. Yeah, 
And that's the one we were missing. That and the appointment confirmation were the important ones. That's yeah. what we really needed. Getting pretty nervous about tomorrow. I can only imagine how he's feeling about it. He's getting quiet, so I'm sure he's thinking a lot. But he's answering all the questions, right? Where will you be staying? Marriott, downtown Louisville. And what's the purpose of this visit? Workshop for cultural exchange. It sounds good. Tomorrow's the moment of truth. It's hard to ignore this overwhelming sense of pride and strength and courage held by most Haitians that I've met. Nous même haïtiens, oui, nous c'est force, nous c'est courage. Et me toujours dit nous bon détermination. Côté côté nous voulez rien à faire et à plus vite là. Something that I aspire to have in myself, and it's inspiring. It's something to take to heart. It's something to be admired. People sleep on us, man. They sleep on our country, they sleep on our heritage, they sleep on our history, and we deserve a lot more recognition than what we're given. We were the first country to abolish slavery. Like, that's no small feat. We made them get the fuck out of there, and we gained our independence. The people who live, 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 the people who
when she calls me daddy, when she sleeps on me like at night time, that makes me feel like the richest man in life. You got to drink a beer before? Yes, we do. <laughs> We're doing a pre-celebration. <laughs> Do you have a petition? Of course I do. Are you married? Oh, no. <laughs> what will you be doing while you're in the United States? Workshop for cultural exchange. Where are you staying? At the Market Hotel downtown Rojo. Yeah, you're good, bro. It's 7.30. Roy should be in his interview right now. We're in the car because we don't want to jeopardize anything for Roy. We don't want to be caught filming outside the embassy and uh, risk messing anything up. Oh, they say that the petition is not validated yet. The petition will be validated on the 14th. There's just something that says, uh, you're, like, your, your stuff not complete, that you have to come back, get your, get your stuff together. And... So it's not bad news, you're not denied. I would have denied. denied you then. You just got to go back and prove that yeah. it's a real visa. It's a hope. Yeah. I have time to know my lessons better, too. <laughs> study some more? Yeah, study some more. Roy hadn't been denied the visa, but he was told he needed more paperwork and that his appointment would be rescheduled for Monday. I should have original documents. The, paper, the paperwork should be uh, original. They said it should be in the system uh, on the 14th. Right. They said it wasn't on file, right? Mm -hmm. They said they couldn't see it in the system. No, they, it's not in the system. He said it's. Roy said they couldn't find it in the system. They didn't see it in the system. Um, let me call the lawyer and I will get back to you guys as soon as I can. Okay. Cool. Hi, right, man. See you. Later. Boom. Maybe I don't know. I can say hopefully, right? Yeah. When no. it's maybe. Hopefully, absolutely. I'm definitely hopeful. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Are you ready to go, bro? So we called Dave and our attorney, and they told us they'd send the paperwork to arrive on Monday. And just sit tight in the meantime. So we thought it was a good time to go buy some art. And on the roof and everything. We'll go find some place in the yard to put it on. But we ended up with a solar panel for Roy instead. <laughs> Supposed to fly him out on Monday. Yeah. Hopefully, after you pick up the visa, hopefully that goes through in time. Everything's gone good so far. How you call that? Something you can give other guy can fish his own fish. He can take his own fish. How you call that? Oh, fishing. Uh, teach a man to fish. Yeah. As opposed Asian to buying it. Asian need that. Asian need that. You don't need just give food like you think. You That's teach him, yeah. it's better than give him. Mm -hmm. That's all I see for Haiti. Give, give, Haiti give, no don't teach. need, like, all time, all time, give, like, you clothes, give, like, you. Haiti need some peace, mm -hmm. some much love, share with each other. It's not just thing. Mm -hmm. You give me thing, it's finished. When you put something in my mind, it's the forever. Asian need that. That's why I'm not give up in Haiti. All people say, why are you here? I'm here for some reason. I don't care. Yeah. I don't make so much money. I have so much blubber. Asian need to change. Now, it's not like tomorrow. Now. Change his mentality. It's time. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Fritz, I love you so much. Thank you, you for coming back to Haiti. Absolutely. I love when people come in here. You better see by yourself, not let people tell you. I know you'll never let us down. Pull your rights from wrong. I know you'll never let us down. Oh no, oh no, oh no. They made the world so hard. 
every day we'll have to keep on fighting. They made the world so hard every day. The people are dying. Well, dread for hunger and starvation. Dread, dread, lamentation. But we did in revelation. You'll find your redemption Cause you've been give us the teachings of his majesty But we don't want no devil philosophy Give us the teachings of his majesty For we don't want no devil philosophy Feel it in the one drop And we still find time to wrap that's, that's, that's the song he knows better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. I'll see you at the embassy. Right. It's 20 minutes before Roy's interview, and 20 minutes till FedEx opens. Everything came from the lawyer, and I'm reluctant to open this. As much as I want to look inside of this, I would like for him, them to have it unopened, knowing that there's nothing fake to it. The people at the FedEx didn't want to give it to me without proof of Roy's ID, so I had to forward them the email from Roy authorizing me to pick it up. I had to forward them pictures of his ID and his passport. Again, something that uh, we thought would be simple, but ended up being complicated, so simply complicated. I feel like we've done this before. <laughs> if he does need this, we're on the way back with it. So we're going to find out in a few minutes, I guess, whether or not Roy's been approved. We're here. We'll probably shut it down. <laughs> Don't want to get in trouble. The guys just told me I got to run inside and give Roy the paperwork we picked up from FedEx. Um, we were told initially he didn't need any further documentation, so now I'm gonna run over here, get this in, and hopefully that's all we fucking need. I'll see you back in uh, a few minutes with some hopeful good news. It's been just over three hours. No word from Roy, no sign of Roy. It's really dusty and windy. I thought it would be a little bit quicker than this. Hopefully, it's delayed because they're uh, pushing through the whole process today. Normally, they do the paperwork, take your picture, and send it out for processing, coming back to uh, pick up location. Maybe he's doing all that now, so there is no wait, maybe. Again, I'm just being optimistic. I've had three hours to think about it, so maybe I'm just manufacturing best case scenarios. I don't know. I can see him. Roy! Come here, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> you good? Good. Fuck yeah. Good. I go go. Four hours later. If it has has to happen, it will happen. So I don't have to stress. Then, ah, <laughs> here we come, Kentucky. Okay. Uh, yeah. awesome, man. The lady started to ask me a lot of questions. I said, oh. Then she started to type. I said, oh, maybe I'm going to be denied. I kept my head up. I said, I still got my brother waiting for me outside. We were going to celebrate anyway. Okay, we were going to celebrate your acceptance or celebrate just being done with it for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to my surprise, she said, OK, you are approved. Go get your passport in one week at the DHL. That means next Monday. Yeah. Yeah. I got to thank the creator for making this happen, for making me like meet you on Facebook and things were, were so well set up this week and I, I, could, I, I could feel that something special was going to happen in my life. There's a saying in Creole, uh, what 
what is for you and nobody can take it away from you. And I should be in, in Kentucky in, in a few days. Can't wait for Monday. All right, Russell. Bro, see you soon. I did not bring this jacket to Haiti. Lauren, my sweetheart of a girlfriend, was kind enough to bring it. Very thankful, because it is cold here. DHL doesn't give me any issue. I should be in Kentucky this Monday. I just can't wait. We're going to make this shit happen, Roy. I'm kind of celebrating right now. I'm a little bit tipsy. Because I have already... <laughs> I have already drunk three beers. And I have one left in the room. I want to visit my people. I want to... Uh, I want to have so much fun. I'm just excited to take Roy to the places that I go every day, the things that I do every day to share those experiences, to, to do the same thing for him as he's done for me. There's always a reason for something. There's always a reason for something. Hi. Oh. The room you've seen so much. Yeah, yeah. From the yeah. other side. From this side. My side. <laughs> Maternity. Mm -hmm. That's ironic. I don't have any of my arts in here. I have to sell you one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that goes mentally. Laura wanted to keep you at home. Wow. That's the declick to everything. Uh -huh. Yeah. That Facebook message got me here. All big fires started with a sparkle. When Roy looked up L. Kevin Tour on Facebook and the picture that he found was their childhood photograph together, I think that was fate, but they made the choice to be brothers again. They made the choice to build their relationship to what it is now. It's so sad to, to visit Dad's grave. I wish Dad was here to see me in hell. It's so sad. Uh, it's been 11 years in October since Dad died, yeah. I'm not sure he ever would have imagined you and me. That's it, we gotta go. Yeah, we made it. <laughs> we made it. Yes. Because you all fight for this. Je pense que choix, c'est faire un show aux unis unis musique. faire un show aux unis c'est artiste qui vivent dans l'autre pays quelconque. Si c'est pas Miami, c'est Dominicani. Bapan yol plein fil fait, bapan yol se fumi. 
Yo fin sevi avèo, yo di ou bade yo, tou ne kote ou soti, kote la vi a ye. Kote la vi a ye, jouk lan a di a se. Kote la vi a ye, jouk ki bon la pa ye. Kote la vi a ye, jou ki bo la p menen. Kote la vi a ye. I'm so happy to be here with you uh, once again. I would never imagine that would happen. often ask about my relationship with Roy. And I tell them that while we're not biological brothers, we're just as close, as close as any family. We are family. Your true brother is the person that loves you, that cares about you. That's brotherhood to me, because you may be blood brothers and you are not connect. You understand you don't have any connection. To us, being brothers is uh, bigger than that. Elle and Rory's relationship is unlike anything else I've ever seen. I mean, they could not be physically more opposite. They live thousands of miles apart. And yet, that kind of love that they have for each other, I don't even think blood brothers have. In the two weeks that Roy spent in Louisville, we shared a lot of experiences. We met up with friends. We went shopping. So you're from Haiti. Wow, that's groovy. Reverse is reverse. Mm -hmm. Brake mm -hmm. on the left, gas on the right. Up, oh, yep, safety, whoops. And I even taught Roy how to drive. Look at that, you're driving, man. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody told me that you'd be bringing Roni back, it'd be hard to believe. And after about 30 years, Roy and Mom were finally able to reconnect. I love that lady. If I can speak English today, it's because of the two family. They, they brought me here. For you guys to get together and know each other, it's meant to have been. And we were all able to spend Christmas together. Yeah, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to life, uh, to Mother Nature, to all of them. And a lot of people will watch my story and, and will share my point of view, my, my life, my my everything. This album yeah. of our own original music is pieced together from all the trips, all the recording sessions, and all the experiences that Roy and I have shared. It showcases our friends and music from Haiti and Kentucky. Roy and I made a piece of art together. Thank you for coming. With me. These are two sayings that I like in English. Friendship is a gift from God and there's no place like home, definitely. You cannot sleep. Okay, let's go, together. Live 
I'm, let me teach you some Creole. Levy means wake up. Vivid Levy. 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 Levy, Cecilia. C'est pour dire, ja, ja, merci. Les dormi ont levé, ils toujours avaient dans tout chemin qui a passé. Nous pas besoin de sauter, même si nous avons eu un vent de à trembler. Pas sauter, c'est ça que nous avons pour nous faire. C'est pour nous prier, matin, midi, soir, juste en bouquet. C'est pour nous prier matin, midi, soir, juste en fatigué. C'est lui qui fait en l'air, c'est lui même d'où créateur. Nous sommes créatifs. Son ligne batap campé, nous batap capable. Non. C'est lui qui fait en l'air. Et lui même tout qui crée la terre. Oh, son lit même nous batap là. Lui c'est créatif, son lit, son lit. Oui, nous sommes créatifs, sans lit, sans lit. Oh, nous ne pas de la Non, nous ne sommes pas de la Non, 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 non. C'est pour nous dire, bon Dieu, merci. L'un de nous levé, il est toujours à bas dans tout le chemin qui a passé. Nous pas besoin de sauter, même si nous avons un peu de temps à trembler. Pas sauter, c'est ça nous qui pour faire. C'est lui qui fait celle-là. Pour lui qui crée terre. C'est lui même qui crée la terre. Pour c'est nous qui sommes créatifs. C'est pour nous prier matin, midi, soir, juste en bouquet. C'est pour nous prier 
matin, midi, soir, si je fatigué.